Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna do another vlog. Let's go. I love creating. You guys probably know that by now. Of course, I make pottery. I used to draw, I used to paint. I make videos now. You guys know that I love creating. So uh, that's uh, a little bit of what I want to talk about today because I've, I've had a few things running around my brain that I want to talk about in a vlog. I've done a couple live streams lately that you guys have seen and most and a lot of you have been to uh, either live or watched them afterwards. And uh, first and foremost, as always, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your support of the channel and everything that goes on here. Uh, thanks for just showing up and watching the videos because there's lots of other things you could be doing. You could be out creating other stuff yourself. But if you're like me, you probably... Uh, came here for inspiration just like I go to other people's channels for inspiration and uh, so that's a little bit of what, what, what I want to talk about today is what that's a little bit of what I want to talk about today as well as inspiration and where, where that comes from and uh, also just some mindset on a couple things that I've been thinking about and that I want to uh, to kind of pass along to you guys first thing I want to say is that you know one thing about creating work is that you know, you have to create something uh, that's that's viable in the marketplace as well. It's like uh, unless you're doing your your creativity as a hobby, then honestly, you can just make whatever you want to make, and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it, and and it doesn't make a hill of beans one way or the other because you don't need to sell it, and you may not want to sell it, and then hey, it's it's all fair game. Make whatever you want, but if you're gonna if you're making content or you're making products that, that are need to be viable and sellable in a marketplace, then then you need to be able to have that in your mind. You got to be able to think, okay, I want to create things. I want to use the things inside me and the things I'm inspired by to make work and to make, uh, make uh, uh, content or products. But then those products and content have to be uh, viable in the marketplace because if, if you need to make income off of that to, to pay your power bill and to pay your for your kids to eat and your 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 car you know your car payment your gas payment all those things then you have to think about that and like I said if you're doing it as a hobby then hey there's no big deal and you know you and I probably have both met artists before that that make products or that make things and they're like they're just kind of bullheaded about it they're like I'm gonna make what I want to make and if you know somebody will like it and if they don't then so what and I'm like well that's probably where that term starving artist comes from and I don't want to be that I want to be uh, you know, making products and services that people really enjoy. And, and that's part of, I think, what, what inspires me as well, is I want to make things that, that do inspire other people. I want people to, to take my pottery and my, my artwork home with them. And when it's in their house, they look at it and it inspires them. The, the form and the color and the design, all those things inspire them in, in whatever else they do. It doesn't have to be pottery. It could just be that they really enjoy good craftsmanship and by seeing it in another form, it inspires them to go do better and make and do better work in what they do in their field. On that note, I love your feedback. I, I'm glad when you guys comment and when you throw suggestions at me in, my, in the comments, I read all those. It, it's probably gonna get to a point pretty soon that I won't be able to respond to all those. But just to let you know, I, I still read all of my comments, even if I don't write a lengthy response. Uh, my goal still at this point is to kind of read them all and respond to the ones that are either asking questions or they're making comments. And uh, I, I know eventually that's not going to be possible just because of time. So uh, I'll apologize in advance for that because I'm not always going to be able to respond to the comments the exact same way as I have been. And so I, I'm sorry about that, but but I do want my channel to grow. So there you go. There's that. Um, so I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the comments. And if and if uh, that kind of goes in line with that thought process of you know what I want to make something that's 
that helps the community, that's viable in this marketplace of YouTube and viable in the marketplace of, of ceramics. So if you have a, a comment or a suggestion or, or something that you'd like to see, I love to read those. It's not that I don't have any ideas of my own, but hey, I'd love to know what you guys, what you think and, and maybe what you'd like to see. Not that I'm always going to just do exactly what you want me to do because going back to the first side of that is I love to be creative and if I'm not inspired by the idea, you probably don't want to see me make it because you know what, it's going to be pretty boring to watch, you know. So that, that's one thing to think about that, you know, if, if there's an idea that you throw at me that I don't just jump on, it, it, it's, it's probably not that it's a bad idea, maybe it's just an idea that doesn't inspire me at the moment and maybe it will next week or next month. And, uh, you know, we all take in different uh, influences throughout our life from many different sources. And those, a lot of times, probably come up, you know, weeks or months or years later. And we, we may even think it's our own idea, but it came from something that happened, you know, a couple years ago. Or maybe even from when we were younger than that. And uh, it just kind of builds and builds and it comes back up and, and we end up being creative on that idea or building on it as we go. So I appreciate your input and keep it up. You guys are doing a great job. I do want to talk about one specific thing. There's been a few people uh, recently asked about very specific things, either uh, glaze recipes or how I apply the glaze or talk more about exactly the process of some of that. And not that I don't want to share all that with you. Some of that may not inspire me to watch or I haven't figured out a way to make that video. Or maybe when it comes to glaze recipes, that's something that that honestly, if you were here in my studio and we were working together, I'd give you that recipe in a heartbeat. Uh, but but also, it would come with a little bit more of a mentality of why I would give you that recipe. Or maybe I'd ask you why you were asking for it. Because um, I think the the idea of you creating and you being creative in the process of glazing your work is just as important as me just giving you a recipe and you having one that works from the get-go. Because... You know what, there, number one, there are thousands and thousands of recipes that you can just go right now on Google or plenty of other websites and, and just search up glaze recipes at whatever cone you're firing and, and you'll have thousands at your fingertips. Now that's good and bad. Good that you have a lot of recipes. Bad because you don't know exactly what they're going to look like at your res, um, and at your, uh, your, in your kiln, at your temperature, and your atmosphere. So even if I gave you guys the recipes to everything I do, they might look different in your kiln than they look in mine. So I guess the mindset that I want to help you guys with and that I want to, to share with you guys is what I've been doing for the last 25 years. Is that, yeah, some of the recipes that I have, people gave to me uh, and, and were very generous in that. So I appreciate that. But, but I also took those recipes and so a lot of them that people gave me, I don't even use anymore, but it started me down a path of, of looking at different glazes and different colors, different ways, and trying different ideas. So I'll give you guys some tips real quick of things that I would do if I were you and you want to you wanna expand your knowledge and expand your reach and expand the colors and the palettes that you're using of color on, in your glazes. Number one, test fire a whole bunch of different glazes. As much as you can afford to, buy the chemicals, mix small batches, test fire glazes. Uh, play around with firing schedules. Uh, Stephen Hill out there is one person, if you're firing an electric kiln, he has some recipes and his firing schedule all listed online where you can play around with that. I didn't even use many of his glazes when I was playing around with an electric kiln, but I took the glazes I was already using and just used his firing schedule changed the look of every glaze I used and I thought it looked better. Play around with layering glazes, your application of those glazes, uh, putting one glaze on top of the other or then switch it around. Do them in reverse because they will look different. If you take glaze A and glaze B and put A over B, it'll look one way. And if you put B over A, it's going to look even di it'll look different. It may look the same, depends on the glaze, depends on how thick it is, how thin it is. You can spray glazes, you can dip glazes, you can brush them on. There are so many ways to do this. You can play around with clay slips. You can buy commercial glazes. There's all kinds of options. I want to show you guys something. When I was working with an electric kiln and that's all I fired in, I had mixed up, I can't remember how many glazes it was. I had a handful, um, maybe six to ten different glazes that I mixed up that I wanted to try how they layered with each other. Look at this paper. This has 35 different combinations. These are 35 different pots. This is more than 35 combinations. Sorry, I misspoke. 
This is 35 different test pieces that I made. And on each piece, there was four different options of glaze layers. and So, so there was two different glazes on each. Uh, well, uh, that one had two. That one had three, um, three different glazes. But what I would do is I would do over and under of each glaze. That was like 140 different glaze combinations that I fired in one electric glaze load. So if you want to know where the ideas came from that I have, where I, you know, where I came up with some of the glazes, I tested the snot out of stuff. You know, I had that. I've got, I mean, I've got a stack of papers and notebooks here of glazes that I've tested, combinations, the way I layered them one way or the other. Um, I had another paper here I wanted to show. Oh, it's in this notebook. Look at that. There's another kind of combination of the way I, I was I was testing different colors and combinations. I mean, figure out what works for you. Come up with a table. Like you can see here, and they all kind of shorten names, you know, what I had there. But just glaze, uh, you know, there's glaze too. I had this glaze on first, and I put one glaze on one side and a different glaze on the other, and then I put that same glaze that I put on first back over the other two. So I did it in like fourths. I glazed like one quarter of the pot, one glaze. I dipped the the kind of two sides of different glaze on each side, and then I put the first glaze over the two again. So I got four kind of different combinations on one pot. And what I was doing, I was actually making test pieces that actually looked like a little cup with a tray at the bottom. So if the gl glaze ran like crazy for being too thick, then it would catch it and it would save my shelf. So it wouldn't ruin that. You can also make test tiles and 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 make those, you know, either an extruder or throw them on the wheel in a ring. Uh, I saw John the Potter do that recently and make test tiles and fire them that way. However you want to do to make tests, but I'm telling you, test glazes. That's one of the biggest things you can do. There's glaze recipes everywhere. Just mix them up and test them and try them out. What that will do for you is teach you and expand your brain instead of me just giving you a recipe or me just telling you how to do something. Don't even, you know, when you watch my videos on how to throw, just take that and let it inspire you. You don't have to make the same shapes or the same colors or the same style of pots that I make or even throw them the same way. But hey, if one little thing I say helps you, then that's what this is for, okay? Uh, I know I probably feel like I, I, you probably feel like I'm ranting right now, but I'm just, I'm passionate because I love creating. But what I love as much as, as creating is helping other people be creative too because if you go out in the world and you make amazing pots like I talk about at the end of every video, you know what? That's going to inspire me. And that's what I want. I want other people out there being creative in their own right, making amazing work so that I can get inspired even more and then I'll go make amazing work. And hey, we'll just, we'll just take this thing, we'll take the lid off of this whole thing of ceramics. One of my, one of the things in my artist statement that I have is that I'm pushing the boundaries of status quo in my field and making ceramics, thrown pottery, I am pushing the boundaries of the status quo because I'm not satisfied with just doing what everybody else does. One of the things about making large pieces that, that is my goal is that I want to make, I don't want to just make a large pot for making a large pot's sake. I want to make a, a 70 pound pot like this one and I want to make it look, have the same presence and the same shape and the same feel that a six pound pot that I make has. Uh, and, and that came out of just seeing other potters. You know what, that sometimes they, they would make a 50 pound pot and it would look nothing like every one of their other pots. And maybe they intended that, maybe they didn't. But my goal when I saw that is like, you know what, I'd like if I make large pots, 20, 30, 50, 100 pounds, I want them to look like my six pound pots and my four pound pots. Because I just have that excellence I feel inside of me that I wanna push that boundary personally. Like I said, I'm not putting anybody else down. If they didn't intend for it to look like their other work, then that's fine. But I wanted to make a body of work that says, you know what, that, that's a Matthew Kelly pot because it looks just like him. His, 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 his three pound pots and it's 70 pound pots. It's three foot tall, but it looks just like the others that he makes. It's just a, a boundary and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a degree of excellence, I guess, that I feel that I wanna do, that I wanna produce. So I tell you what, I encourage you guys, go out there, be amazing potters, be amazing artists, be amazing whatever you do. It doesn't matter if you're a computer programmer, if you, if you, <laughs> um, who knows, if you're a public speaker, just go do what you do and be the best at it. And being the best at it will inspire other people, no matter if they do the exact same thing you do or not. And you know what? 
don't let anybody else tell you or, or don't let anybody else put you down for what you do because you know what? If anybody else is trying to put you down, it's because they're jealous of what you do. And, and the, the chances are they couldn't do what you do in a million years and that's why they try to put you down is because they wish they could do what you do half as good as you do it. And that should inspire and motivate you to go out and be even better at it because you know what? You have a skill and you have a talent. Go use that skill and talent and, and develop it even more and become even better. Forget what other people say. Forget the naysayers and just go do it because that's what matters and that's what's going to make you happy is, is being better at, at, and, and being happy with who you are no matter what anybody else says, okay? So here's a little rant for today. I didn't mean for this to be a rant, but it's, it's a vlog and I'm glad you guys are here. Appreciate you. And if, you, if this inspired you and this helped you, Go make some amazing pots if you're a potter. And like I've been talking about, if you're not a potter, go make some amazing pots. No, uh, go do whatever you do and do it the best of your ability. Inspire somebody else. And uh, doggone it, let's, just, let's have some fun and let's make this thing happen. Let's make this world a better place by being amazing at being human beings. All right? Anyway, appreciate you guys and we'll see you later. Bye. <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> well, that was loud. Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, wow, that's echoey. It's all these empty pots. Hello? Hello? This pot's ringing when I talk. <laughs> My voice is echoing inside that pot. I can hear it. Maybe you can't hear it, but anyway.